Hey there, my name is David and I will be your Linode developer advocate for this video. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at a Docker solution called AppSmith that will allow us to build internal tools and dashboards to help us streamline our processes with our teams, our businesses, and our organizations and those sorts of things. So with all of that said, let's jump in. But before we jump in, I should mention that if you head down to the description, you'll find a link where you can head over to Linode and get $100 in free credit to check out their service for 60 days. So if we take a look at AppSmith's website here, this is appsmith.com, uh, we can see that this is an open source, low code platform to build, ship and maintain internal tools, allows you to connect any uh, data source, create UIs with pre-built widgets, code freely with an inbuilt JS editor, that's, and you can deploy with one click. Now, you may be wondering, well, what kind of, what, what, what are internal tools? And if we scroll down, they actually answer that for us. And it's internal tools are custom dashboards, ad, admin panel, and CRUD apps that enable your team to automate processes and securely interact with your databases and APIs. So again, in this video, we're actually going to get AppSmith installed. We'll go through a quick kind of built-in tutorial, and then we'll kind of wrap things up and go from there. Now, Linode has a tutorial on their website on how to do this, but they've also got some things uh, in their Linode dashboard that's going to help us simplify this process. So without out of the Way. Here we are logged into our dashboard. Hopefully you'll be logged in as well. And the first thing we want to do is come up to the top right and click on the create Linode button. Now here's where I'm going to deviate from Linode's tutorial just a little bit. I'm actually going to come over to marketplace and I'm going to search for Docker under select an app. I'm gonna click that. I wanna go this route just to simplify it a little bit. So once we've selected Docker here, we can scroll down. We can actually hide the advanced settings if we want to do that. Uh, you could actually, if you wanted to be a bit more secure, you could create a pseudo user uh, that isn't root, which is probably a better idea uh, just for security purposes, that sort of thing. So I'm going to minimize that. I'm going to select an image. I'm gonna use Debian 11. Of course, there's Debian 10. There's also Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. So you've got some options on what you can use with regards to a Docker instance here. Uh, next, we're going to select a region. Basically, we want to uh, select a region that's close to wherever uh, most of our activity is going to originate. Below that, we've got some options for a dedicated CPU, shared CPU, high memory, or GPU. I honestly, for the sake of this tutorial, you could really go dedicated or shared. Um, of course, if you use the link in the description, you'll get that hundred dollars in free credit for 60 days. So let's just go ahead and go with the dedicated four gig. Uh, and that will give us uh, $30 a month in, uh, in fees for this. But again, this is on Linode's dime. So let's go ahead and do that. Below that, we're gonna scroll down. We're going to select a label. Um, you can kind of name this whatever, but let's name it something with some purpose behind it, right? So we're gonna just call this AppSmith. Uh, we're not gonna need tags. We don't need tags. That's just, again, for categorization purposes. Uh, below that, we're going to enter a root password. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter that. Backups, I always like to have backups. Backups, you should never deploy anything without a backup, in my opinion. Um, and I'm also gonna do a private IP just because I like having a private IP when I deploy applications and that sort of thing. Once we've got this uh, set up the way we want to, down at the bottom, we can see our summary, uh, and then we can click on Create Linode. A few moments later. So here we are just a few minutes later, and we can see that AppSmith, or the AppSmith Linode, rather, is up and running and ready to go. So what we wanna do is SSH into our server. So what we're gonna do is copy that. We're gonna open up a terminal window here, and we're just gonna go ahead and paste that in, and we're gonna enter our password. So we'll hit enter, and now we are logged in. What I wanna do next is actually clear uh, my screen by pressing Control L. Now, what I encourage you to do is actually head over to uh, AppSmith's GitHub repository so that uh, we can see all of the files that are in here and get ourselves familiar with the code if we wanna go that route. What we're gonna do is cheat just a little bit though, and we're just going to pull their docker-compose.yml file from their server to ours and deploy it that way. Now, if we take a look at Linode's tutorial, the one that we kind of skipped the first few steps on, um, if we take a look, the, the way to do that is make a directory, change into that directory. That's fine, that's not a big deal. But next we've got this curl, uh, and then there's this bit.ly link. So what I wanna do is actually show you <laughs> what this bit.ly link looks like. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and just open that up. And here is, we can see raw.githubusercontent.com slash appsmith org um, slash uh, appsmith docs version 1.4 get book assets docker compose.yml. So that's, I wanna show you that file uh, just cause I think copying and pasting a bit.ly link into a command prompt without looking at the file first, it's kind of just bad practice. So I wanted to show that so that we can kind of trust what it is we're downloading here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come back over here to our uh, PowerShell. Uh, like it says, we're gonna do, uh, do mkdir, uh, we'll do amper, or the tilde slash um, uh, appsmith. 
like so. And then we'll do a CD into AppSmith, like so. The next thing we wanna do actually is again, curl or get uh, that, that Docker Compose .yml file. So we're gonna go ahead and use the uh, the script that, uh, or the, the little, little code snippet uh, from this tutorial, this curl L. We're gonna go ahead and grab that, like so, and hit enter. And if we do an ls, we can see that there's a docker compose.yml file there. And if we do uh, a nano docker compose.yml, here we can see we've got a version three. Uh, we've got our services of AppSmith. We've got a full Docker image here uh, that we're not gonna have to build. Um, and we can see that we're gonna use the AppSmith community edition version of AppSmith. We've got a container name of AppSmith. We've got ports 80 and 443 here. If you're already, if your server is already using ports 80 and 443 for whatever reason, uh, you can come down here and change these to something like 8010, like that, or you know 40 or 40. 543 if you wanted to go that route. Um, this is a brand new server, so we don't need to do that. But if you were deploying this on a server that was already using ports uh, 80 and uh, 443, uh, you would want to change those. And that's how you go about doing that. Our volumes, uh, we're just going to deploy this right here in the folder that we're already in. Um, and it's just going to put it in a stacks subfolder uh, for the app Smith stacks. Next, we've got a restart policy of unless stopped. That is perfectly acceptable. Below that, we've got some stuff, uh, some labels uh, for, for enabling Watchtower. Now, uh, if you wanna use Watchtower, that is your prerogative. Just be careful with it because if you're not familiar, or if you're not sure what the new update is gonna do, it could break something in your project. So be careful using, um, using Watchtower for automatic updates. I think it's great to get notifications about updates, but I don't necessarily trust it to do, uh, you know, actual updates automatically in a production setting. It's just, it's a, it's a touchy situation for some people. So if you wanted to do that, however, uh, you know, you could just come over here um, and delete the, uh, the little hashtag or the pound sign in front of uh, basically this line uh, all the way down um, and then save, exit and deploy. The next thing we wanna do though is actually deploy this. And the way we're gonna do that is by doing uh, docker dash compose up dash D. So it's just saying, hey, docker compose, bring up the, the, the docker compose file that's here but detach it from uh, the terminal window here, meaning uh, if, if we didn't run this with the dash D, uh, this container would shut down as soon as we close this terminal window. So we wanna make sure that it's not dependent on the terminal window being open, hence the dash D. So once we've got that, we can press control, or we can just press enter. We'll let it go ahead and pull everything. And once it's done, we'll come back and take a look at AppSmith in our browser. A few moments later. Creating AppSmith is done. We can see that down here in the green text right there. So our next step will be to jump over to our browser window and open up our Linode's IP address. So we'll come back to our Linode dashboard. We're just gonna come to the IP address for this Linode and click copy, open a new tab, paste that in there. And here is AppSmith. Uh, so we will wanna give this a few minutes to come up. It is doing some stuff in the background. It is still deploying some services in the background for this container. So if you see AppSmith servers unavailable, pre please try again after some time, give it a couple of minutes and uh, it should finish setting up and you can try again. Here we are um, and it says, let's create a user account so you can make some awesome applications. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna click get started. I'm gonna say just exploring and I'll click next. So usage data preferences. Do you wanna share anonymous data to help improve the product? Yes or no, completely up to you. You can check this box on or off. And do you want to get updates about um, additional products and services that they may release? I'm gonna say no. But next we're gonna click on make your first app. And here we are. Now we're logged in for the first time. Uh, and it says, welcome to AppSmith. Here's a quick overview of how AppSmith works. You can connect your database or APIs so that you can query your own database or APIs uh, inside AppSmith. Uh, you can use the drag and drop pre-built widgets to build a UI. And then you can publish and share with permissions uh, where it says instantly publish and share your apps with users. Choose from predefined access and control roles. Do you wanna start the tutorial or do you wanna build your own? I think this is a good time to start our first tutorial. So let's go ahead and click on the orange button right here. So in this tutorial, we'll build a tool to, dis to display customer information. This tool has uh, tables that display customer data and, and a form to update a particular customer record. Try out the tool before you start building. So. Uh, we can do that. This app connects to a Postgres database with customers, uh, uh, with customer data called customers DB. That seems pretty logical. So here we've got uh, Kelvin A. We, you know, we can scroll through. We can click on any of these that we want. Uh, let's do uh, David Washington here. Uh, let's change him to DB Tech, and uh, let's change 
his email address. And we're gonna say USA and we're gonna click to update. And just like that, now this has been updated. Now this doesn't give me the option at the, for the sake of the tutorial to update the picture, but it did allow me to update the data associated with him with regards to name, email, and location or, or country. So now that we can see that it works, let's see how it works. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on Start Building. So our first step is querying the database. Here we're querying a Postgres database populated with customer data. And it says this command will fetch the first 20 items in the user data database. Hit Run to see the response. So here we can see the, the query. We can see the little Postgres thing up here for Get Customers. So here we can see that we're gonna select all, uh, we're gonna select everything from the users and we're gonna order by the ID. Um, and once we're, we're happy with that, of course, we can modify that if we wanted to something like that, um, we're gonna go ahead and click on run. And right down here, uh, we can see uh, what those look like. Our response is uh, items or IDs five through nine. There weren't 20, but here you can kind of get an idea of what that's going to look like down here. We can also look at it as a, a JSON file if we wanted to do that, or we can just look at it raw, which again is very much a JSON uh, layout there. We can look at errors if there were any, we can look at logs uh, for that. We can inspect the, uh, inspect the entity if we wanted to go that route. But we kind of get the idea of how this query works. We could uh, select all from any of the tables inside that Postgres database. So we're going to proceed to the next steps. So we want to, uh, our next step will be to display the response in a table. You're going to select the table widget we've added for you. So we're going to click on customers table. And here's what that looks like. So what we want to do is copy this get customers dot data snippet right there. We're going to paste that right into here like so. And here, just that quickly, we can see that it has already populated all of that information. So that gives us an idea of how we can lay this out very, very simply by just using a quick little snippet that they've got here. Okay, so now it says the table is now displaying the response of your query, and you can use the double braces like that in any input field to bind data to widgets. So now we can uh, proceed to the next step. The right pane, or the pane on the right is called the property pane, and here you can modify data or properties, data, and styling for every widget. So we're gonna click on got it. So here for step four, uh, it says let's build a form to update a customer record will display the data from the table's selected row inside an input field. This will let us see the data before we update it. So again, we can click through and we can see uh, any of this stuff in here. And of course we don't have it, it's none of this data is showing up for the name, email and country. And that's because we actually have to bind that data to those cells. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna click proceed. So here it's saying, hey, for, get the customer tables for the selected row, we wanna get the name. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this. Like so, we're gonna click right here. And then for the default value, that's where we're going to put uh, that little snippet in the double, uh, double curly braces there. We can do the same thing with email if we wanted to do that, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. So let's proceed to the next step. So here it's saying, hey, let's connect their input and their country data, but kind of repeating what we just did for the name. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna come over to the default value again. We'll paste that in there. We can see that now that we've completed that, the little, the, our tutorial is gonna check that off. We're gonna do the same thing here for the country, for the default value, like so. So now we can see that all of the inputs are connected to the table's selected row, so we can proceed to the next step. So we want to switch to, uh, to the widget pane, like it's pulled over here, and then drag and drop a button that's going to allow us to click submit and actually update this data. So we're gonna grab the button, we're gonna drag it over uh, to just like right there, should be fine. And it says click to update, so we're gonna click that uh, and we're gonna click proceed to the next step. Now it's ready for us to trigger the update command. So it says to update customers through the button, we created an update customers info query for you, which is ready to use. We're gonna proceed to the next step and select the button widget to see the properties and the property pane. From the on click dropdown, select execute a query and then select update customer info. So we're gonna click here. Uh, we're gonna do this on click, like it's kind of, it's got a little, a little tip there, like, hey, this is where we wanna look, so we're gonna do this. So execute a query, and then update customer info. After trigger, or after successfully triggering the update query, fetch and update the customer data. So we're gonna click on the on success dropdown, and then choose or execute a query, and then get customers. So now you've built a way to see customer data and update it, so we'll click continue. So now we can test our app to ensure that there are no errors. When you're ready, click deploy and deploy this app to a URL. So uh, let's let's come over to here. 
uh, let's just change this to a vid and uh, we're gonna call this YouTube and then we'll click on update. And here we can see uh, that it has updated my name and it's updated my location. So at this point, we are good to go. Our application works. So what we can do is come up to the top right and click on deploy. Cool, you just built your first app in AppSmith. You can now invite others to this application and you can rate your experience if you'd like to do that. Of course, up at the top, you can click share. That's how you would share this with other people. You can also edit the app. And up here, of course, we've got um, our, uh, our, our profile information, edit profile, sign out, those sorts of things. So now that we've built our first app via the tutorial, let's actually jump over to the apps over here in the top left. And here we can see we've got a customer uh, dashboard or a customer support dashboard. Uh, we've got our first application. We've got workspaces. Of course, DB's apps is the workspace that we're in right now. We can create a new application if we wanna do that. So at this point, we can uh, generate a page from a, a data table. So if we wanted to uh, create a CRUD UI and connect to a database, we could do that. Or we could start from a template. Uh, and there are a bunch of different templates in here that you can get started with if you'd like to do that. Of course, you can filter by data source, basically what kind of data source. Is it a, is it a MongoDB, a PostgreSQL, S3, REST API? What kind of functionality are you looking for? Is it customer support or communication or sales or marketing? Lots of different options in there that you can select from and start kind of from a pre-built template to help expedite your application, your internal uh, application building process to help streamline some of your backend processes. So that's kind of a quick introduction to AppSmith. Also, don't forget, head down to the description where you'll find a link to head over to Linode and get $100 in free credit to check out Linode service free for 60 days. But that kind of wraps up everything I wanted to talk about in this video. I also wanna thank you guys for spending just a few minutes of your day with me today. I really do appreciate your time and I will hopefully talk to you in the next video.